my student in this lecture i am going to discuss gravitational potential energy let us see what is it so earlier we have learned in work energy power if for a system configuration changes it's a potential energy changes and that change is equal to negative of work done by internal conservative forces right now let us take two point masses m1 and m2 two point masses let us take m2 is now at rest m2 is at rest now m2 is moving m1 is at rest m2 is moving towards m1 because of gravitational force because of gravitational force okay now see how to calculate that work done by gravitational force we are taking m1 and m2 as system therefore gravitational force on m2 becomes internal force which is a conservative force okay that's the calculation of that work done work done by gravity is equal to integral coming to force it is g m1 m2 if separation is r at one instant it is r square since m2 moving towards m1 distance is decreasing therefore dr will be negative i am taking it as a minus dr since dr is negative i am taking minus dr to make it positive okay so force is left side displacement also left side so between those two angle is now zero so cos zero see carefully once what we have written f into ds into cos of the angle this is magnitude of force this is magnitude of displacement which is positive into cos g now take limits let us initially r1 separation between them finally r okay then see how much we get in this g m1 m2 constant remaining 1 by r square minus dr i take minus outside minus outside g m1 m2 integration of 1 by r square dr okay now 1 by r square dr that becomes now minus 1 by r it becomes minus 1 by r that means now this is equal to minus of minus of plus it is g m1 m2 into 1 by r2 minus 1 by r1 okay this is work done by gravitational force which is internal force and this is equal to negative of change in potential energy so i am writing here delta u or delta u means it is u of r2 minus u of r1 is equal to negative of work done so minus g m1 m2 into 1 by r2 minus 1 by r1 right so we got now change in potential energy and if you see carefully right side part is a constant because r1 is known r2 is known m1 m2 and g all values are known that means u of r2 minus u of r1 this value is known but if you want to know one of these two values we have to fix other value for example the value on the right side is take it as one this value is one i can take this is a two then this is one if this is a three 
this is 2. If this is a 4, this is 3. Like this, we can take infinitely many values. So if you want to know one value, we have to fix other value. And this is a completely our choice. Because so while solving problems, we focus on what is a change in potential edge, which is not changing on changing reference point. Okay. So I'm taking here. Let us take. Potential edge is zero when R is infinite. That means when separation between the point masses is very large, then no potential energy for system. And let us take now R1 is infinity. R2, it is equal to R. Then see what we get. U of R remaining becomes zero. Other one, that is equal to that is equal to here R2, it is equal to R and this is 1 by infinity which becomes zero. So this is equal to minus G M1 M2 by R that is now potential energy of two particle system. It is gravitational potential energy of two particle system. From this we can say if separation is increasing, potential energy will. See carefully here, negative sign. Separation increasing means numerical value is decreasing. But since we have negative sign, total value is now increasing. So whenever separation increases, gravitational potential energy also increases. Okay. Suppose if we have three particles like M1, M2 and M3. Then we have to consider three pairs. M1, M2, one pair. M2, M3, one more pair. M3, M1, one more pair. And take now this result. Okay. If you are having N pairs, sorry, N particles. If you have N particles, then we have to consider N C2 pairs. That means it is N into n minus 1 by 2 pairs. Suppose having here, let us say n value 4, means having 4 particles. Then 4 C2 means 4 into 3, 12, 12 by 2, 6. So we have to take 6 pairs. Okay. Right. Let us see next one. So next one is this. Gravitational potential difference. So first, how it is defined? The gravitational potential difference is defined as the work done by the external agent in moving a unit mass from one point to the other point slowly. Right? Let us see what is that. So work done in bringing a unit mass from one place to other place. Definition part is delta V is given as work done by the external force per unit mass. Okay. Let us see carefully. First consider work energy theorem. That is a net work equal to delta K. Now it is given that bringing it slowly means delta K equal to zero, right? Net force. Work done by gravitational force. Work done by external force. This net equal to zero. That implies by external force work equal to negative of work done by gravitational force. And this is equal to delta U. That means potential difference is also defined as is also defined as change in potential energy per unit mass. Change in potential energy per unit mass. Okay. So in this way we can calculate potential difference. That is 
what done by external force in bringing unit mass from one place to other place slowly, which is also equal to change in potential energy per unit mass, right? That is what we have written here. External force plus gravitational force zero. External force negative of work done by gravity, which is equal to delta u. Therefore, delta v equal to delta u by m. Right. See you next one. Relation between g bar and v means gravitational field strength and potential. Okay. See how to get it. See, we are knowing that conservative force is equal to negative of potential energy gradient. Conservative force is equal to negative of potential energy gradient. This is what we have learned in work energy power. Okay. Using now that result in this case. That is, in the place of F bar, I am writing M into G bar. That is equal to minus del bar. In the place of potential energy, we can write it is a mass into potential. Okay. See how to get this one. Just now we have discussed delta V is equal to delta U by M. Right. So from this we can write from this we can write delta U is equal to delta U is equal to M into delta V. So change in potential energy equal to mass into change in potential. Right? Or if you take potential energy, that is equal to mass into potential at that point. Okay? Now that is what I have written here. So mass gets cancelled. So it is now G bar that is equal to minus del bar into V. So reading this as strength of the gravitational field is equal to negative of potential gradient. I am repeating strength of the field is equal to negative of potential gradient. And if you see negative sign along the field potential decreases. I am repeating along the field potential decreases. Suppose we are dropping a body from a height. It moves down. While moving down, its gravitational potential energy decreases. Right? The reason is that its potential is now decreasing. And which is converting into kinetic energy. Okay? And let us calculate how to find the potential due to a point mass at a point. So calculation of potential because of a point mass. I am taking a point mass m. We want to calculate at a distance r. What is gravitational potential because of that point mass? Let us use now the result what we have discussed earlier. That is delta v equal to right. Delta v equal to delta u by m okay so we are bringing unit mass right so what i am saying here using delta v in the place of delta v suppose separation equal to r2 so v of r2 minus separation r1 v of r1 that is equal to 1 by m into u of r2 minus u of r1 u of r1 let us take 
let us take V of R. When R value is very large, potential is zero. Okay. And we are knowing that potential energy is zero when separation is very large. And let us take here R1 infinity and R2 equal to R. Then see what we get. R2 equal to R means V of R equal to V of R equal to this is now we are taking R equal to R1 is infinity. This is 0. This is now U of R. U of R means in case of two point masses, this is 1. Right? And this is now M. And to avoid confusion, what we can do is take here mass is M0. We are bringing mass M0. Okay? Right. Then this is equal to when separation is at potential energy minus g m1 m2 by r right into 1 by m0 m0 cancels so v of r that is equal to minus g m by r okay so potential due to point mass it is equal to minus g m by r and whenever using this result, we have to keep in mind that we have to take an assumption when separation is large, there is no potential. Okay. Right. Let us now calculate potential due to potential due to a uniform ring on its axis on its axis. See how to calculate that potential due to a ring which has distribution of mass uniform. So we want to calculate now on its axis at a distance we can say x. Radius is r, its mass is m. Okay. And if you observe carefully, each and every point on the ring is at same distance from this point. And that distance is square root of r square plus x square. I am repeating, each and every point on this ring is at the same distance from this point. Therefore, directly we can write Using now this result minus gm by r, we can write v equal to minus gm by distance equal to square root of r square plus x square. So this is now potential, potential due to a ring which has distribution of mass uniform on its axis. So this is just like a point mass, right? So we got same kind of result. Okay.